Hello, citizen scientists. Today we're going to take a look at the monarch butterfly. It takes a village to raise a child, but it takes all of us to save our planet. And the monarch butterflies are a very important part of that planet. So how do we get started? You need a container to put a caterpillar in. Maybe it's an empty jar like a peanut butter jar or a fish bowl. Maybe you have a salad bowl from a takeout. Whatever you have handy, nothing fancy, but you have to remember to have a cover on it. Pantyhose or tights work well, or window screen. Just don't put a window screen on a container with a tiny caterpillar or you'll find the escape artist. And then you need a container to put some water in for the plant. It's going to take the leaf of the milkweed, cut along both sides of the stem. You're going to take a pill bottle or similar small bottle, poke holes in it, use some poster putty and mount it into a cover so it doesn't tip over and spill the water. I've had that happen. Now let's get started. We're going to go searching. We're going to find a milkweed plant. This milkweed plant is in full bloom. The smell of those milkweed flowers is wonderful. And the butterflies really like the nectar. The butterflies have to have nectar. So this bee balm is one of the flowers they really like planted next to my milkweed. They drink their nectar from the milkweed, fly on over to the milkweed and lay their eggs. And you'll know that they've laid an egg because you'll see holes in the milkweed. And if you carefully turn that leaf over, you might find a little tiny caterpillar. Or maybe you'll see a big fat caterpillar munching away. Usually they like to be on the bottom side. They don't want the predators to see them. And one of the things you need to remember is there is too much milk. A thing is too much milkweed. A lot of milkweed is like putting up a McDonald's sign saying lunch is served here. And the predators like the ants, the earwigs, the red milkweed beetle all like to feast on baby caterpillars. Here's a leaf that I picked with the caterpillar on it and another one that I turned over and found an egg. See that little tiny white spot? That's an egg. We'll take a closer look at an egg. This particular egg has a black spot on it. Aha! A monarch caterpillar is eating its way out of that egg. It will eat the shell and then start munching on the milkweed. To show you the size comparison, think of the thickness of a penny and look at the size of an egg. They aren't very big. Here's a caterpillar that I have found. It's on the leaf. The leaf is in the jar or the container with the water and I've placed it in a fishbowl with screen secured with rubber band on top. And here's another caterpillar and some eggs that I have in a carry out salad dish. But what's going on with this caterpillar? See that black streak? Aha, that means it has just shed its skin. No, no, no. Not its skin, just the black stripes on the skin. They do that four times from the time they hatch until they form the chrysalis. And at the top of the chrysalis, you'll sometimes see a black wad, and that's their last shed. Speaking of chrysalises, here's a caterpillar that has attached itself to the container and it's now formed the letter J. It's getting ready to form that chrysalis. If you look carefully, you might find it with a little green spot on it. Don't turn and walk away because within a minute, that green spot will become 
the chrysalis. This one is still forming, still partly in the J. It does a real hula dance as it wiggles back and forth to make that J. And there at the bottom, you'll see the frass, and that's big with piece is the skin that it's shed. The frass is the poop. You have to remember to clean the poop out too. And here we are looking at the chrysalis, waiting about 10 days from the time the chrysalis forms until you see, oh my goodness, there's the monarch black and orange wings showing through that chrysalis. The chrysalis isn't green after all. And here is a monarch butterfly about to hatch. See it starting to come out along the edge? And here the chrysalis is being opened up and that monarch is pushing its way out. It's now out and the thorax, the big black part of its body is pumping fluid through to the wings. It's sort of like our blood. And you'll notice the empty chrysalis is clear. Here's another picture of a different butterfly coming out. I like to stage them once in a while, but don't handle the chrysalises. I've been at this a long time, so I've had practice. There's that big fat thorax, and there is the butterfly emerging. And there's one fully emerged. This is a female. If you notice on the very first slide, there was a picture of a male. We'll quickly go back to that. Those two little black spots, that designates a male. Let's take a look at the life cycle of a monarch. In July, they're busy with the monarch butterflies laying eggs and the eggs hatching and the caterpillars eating. But by August, they're getting ready for the fall migration. August, September, and October, they start flying south because they can't survive the winter. The ones in this part of the United States spend their winters in Mexico. West of the Rockies, they spend the winters in California. November, December, January, February, they're down there in Mexico. In March, they start getting ready to come north. They fly to Texas. The butterfly lays its egg. The egg becomes the caterpillar. The caterpillar becomes the chrysalis. The chrysalis becomes the monarch, and the cycle continues. Those butterflies in Texas fly on to Missouri. They go through the cycle. A butterfly in Missouri flies up to Iowa, goes through the cycle. It takes four or five cycles for them to get from Mexico to Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Canada. I was fortunate in 2018 to go to Val de Bravo in Mexico and see where some of the butterflies are. These aren't perfect pictures, but if you'll notice all that orange on those trees, all that orange is monarch butterflies. And now we've come to the end of our slideshow. You have a learned a little bit about saving monarchs because they're an important part of our ecosystem. But the library is full of books and materials and so is the internet. I encourage you to go out, find a caterpillar, remember to keep it fed, and don't handle it. They aren't like your dog or cat to be played with. It's like my grandma used to say, hands behind your back, watch and look and enjoy.